behaviors of Gaza media again we are here at ECA convention we have the opportunity that the law mayor of Minji the municipal council is here in our media. Professor Nikashos came the law mayor of Minji he came to the US for a visit and we met after ECA USA convention and I had an opportunity to interview him just to get some insight of the project going on in the Minji Municipal Council. And here is the presentation. Good morning, dear viewers of Gaza Media. My name is Enes. I'm the host for this uh, short interview with our law mayor, the mayor of Minji, uh, who cover uh, the bank fondom, Njogi fondom, and uh, the Sota fondom. So all these three fondom are within the municipality of Minji Royal Council. So he came here for a visit uh, to help uh, our people back home to bring a message because uh, ETA, which is ETA, and the One Man uh, Association Convention was yesterday. So I just seized this opportunity that we can have a chat and uh, so that maybe some of the message that he didn't have the opportunity to say it yesterday to the general public, he can say it through Gaza Media so that people can always go back and watch. And, uh, Lord Mayor, uh, you are welcome to the United States again. I know we have been there kind of zigzag, very fast paced. Thank you, uh, Gaza Media, and thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with my population through your media. As you rightly said, I came here for this period knowing that is the convention season, and I know that it is a grouping for the majority of my citizens within particular locations. So yesterday was that of Eda, and I was hoping that if my schedule could permit me, mm -hmm. I will attend that of Lekudu. Yeah, I know, yeah, because, you know, yeah, we said there were two conventions, <laughs> even yesterday. Yes, Mayor, uh, I was present in that convention yesterday. I know you spoke, you were the guest speaker. Not the keynote speaker, but the guest speaker. But I think your message resonated from reaction, from the sample interview that I was doing. And one of uh, the message we were saying was that resonates so much was that people need to give back to the community while they are here. So why do you, how do you come out with that message that we here in the diaspora are supposed to give back or in that kind of way that you put it, if I may just want to refresh so that people that were not here in the convention. Thank you. I grew up traditionally and knew the impact of those who have worked hard and have taken a position in the society, our parents will always say, we are sending you out as hunting dogs. Mm -hmm. And then now, you are in the USA. That is the pinnacle of development. That is where everything happens. That is where there is solution to everything. And if you have a large community as you are, and you are working hard, as we know the Bauma people who are working very hard, we know that you have potentials intellectually, planning-wise and financially, we can only come back to you. We can fall back to you where we are lacking and say, can we federate our forces? So that what you have acquired here, can you do remittances? Can you plow them back so that you can create another small USA within the BLM? Yeah, that's true. Thank you. Uh, I think the, one of the things is sometimes we here in the diaspora, and I think many would think the same, Sometimes it's accountability or an organization like this, they may want to carry on the project, especially with our topography, the issue of road. Having somebody to really say, who do we partner with? How do we run a caterpillar, a bulldozer? Maybe to come and open a road or to maintain a road that lead to our village may be a problem. Do you think Menji Council? Who step in and maybe pan so that maybe bring some accountability so that say for example a Lekudu or Eta or even some other organization in like Chemfem that are big organization in Jina Chai in JA that are within the bank but they are very strong organization that if they say they want to open road to their village, maybe Pana will manage a council that has a bulldozer. Can you guarantee that there will some be a, a level of accountability? Yeah, thank you. The new approach to development within our communities is a decentralized approach. And with the decentralized approach, the focus is participatory development, where the community is partnering with the state or organs of the state to ensure their development. 
And of recent, we had a text creating neighborhoods development committees and village development committees. And the purpose is that whatever resources that can be them from the state or from private sources, there must be individuals on the ground from the community to verify how they are used and equally to see the quality of work that is done. With that, we came in with a slogan, or our maxim was, a clean new mandate. Mm -hmm. And with a clean new mandate, it is captioned on inclusive development. There is nothing that we do without involving the communities. And with that, we have shown already some goodwill towards this partnership. You call it the Seminary Community. When their water project had a problem, we partnered with them. The council brought in some resources, they brought in manpower, and their water is flowing. If you go to the road around Zen Seleba, we partner with them, they give the labor, we give some materials, mm -hmm. and we work. The road and Dungui is the same thing, we work with the Dungui community. And on a larger scale, we work with the Fondom Development Associations. The President Generals of ECA, mm -hmm. Lekudu and Jafkoda, we could cover them, we consult them. And to show the direction towards road development, Menji Council at its own level has already acquired some of this equipment. We have a front end loader, mm -hmm. we have a grader that is on the way, and it is important I highlight here, I discuss with some big stakeholders about purchasing some equipment that we cannot have, particularly the bulldozer. Mm -hmm. Because I told them that the council is a structure for them. We cannot go into competition with them, we can go into partnership. Let's not buy the same equipment and it seems as if we are fighting with the same customers. Mm -hmm. So that if the community has an equipment, the council can hire it out from them to do a project. If the council has an equipment, they can now lease it out to them at a subsidized rate because where the council has an equipment, it belongs to all. You book for it mm -hmm. and you can then fuel, we give you the technical experts. So that is what we are expecting and that was one of my mission statements. To see how we work with you people to design win-win partnerships. Uh, uh, and then for accountability. Through the village development committees, we are putting in place those people who will check and cross-check and verify what is being done, particularly with resources. Mm -hmm. And if a project comes and we have to do it in a partnership way, we will create a board of trustees. We will have people who will be verifying. Mm -hmm. The action will not be done single-handedly by the council. It will be done by the people and will only be there for quality assurance. Yeah, but the reason I ask that question is because People have, you know, people have always had the notion that when we send money, we'll never have anything back, we'll never get any feedback, we'll never see anything done. We worry here that the money is gone, the money has disappeared. And so that, now, following up with uh, the road issue, the bridge, you, you know, the road, most of our road have some of this uh, river or stream that crosses them. If you construct a road, you don't build that bridge, that road is incomplete. The main bridge that lead to the headquarters where your office is, uh, Mary Head of Africa, present to Menji. Uh, I think about four or six months ago, that bridge was in very bad shape. Uh, they were putting some plan on it for vehicle and motorcycles because it was very dangerous. Then later on, we saw there was some construction. There was some material, iron rod. Then they started some work. Then maybe later on, they stopped. Now, uh, they have repaired, they have rehabilitated the, the old bridge, the same bridge, which is now motorable. Uh, we have some footages on that one too as well. And according to the report, they said it was Meiji, uh, the office of DO, not Meiji Council, which is headed by you, the office of the DO and the military that have put that joint effort. I just want you to clarify to our audience uh, what kind of partnership, how do you come up with that partnership and what happened to the bridge that was supposed to be constructed, if you have any idea. Okay, uh, thank you so much. The bridge at uh, Mve, mm -hmm. we call it Mve, remains very close to our heart. When we took over office, that became a challenging task to us. Menji Council wrote a project and went to the Ministry of Public Works for a new bridge to be constructed. Finally, it was adopted, but that road is a highway. Is part of the national road, so it goes out of the scope of Menji Council. So the project now was awarded directly from Yaoundé to a contractor. 
they call it Cameroon Contractors Limited. Mm -hmm. So they have the mandate to construct a new bridge, not to rehabilitate okay. the old bridge. So it's a brand new bridge that has to be constructed. It's a bridge of about 5.8 meters wide mm -hmm. and it's about 24 meters long. So when they came to the field and started work, I was not in the country. But I came up and had to go into it because Mr. Ayuk, that has a land by it, mm -hmm. they had issues. So I had to come in to mediate so that they should compensate because it will take part of its mm -hmm. land. Yeah. So it's a bridge that has to be constructed to the tune of 208 million financed by the public investment budget from the Ministry of Public Works. The unfortunate thing with the project was that it did not integrate that component of rehabilitating the old bridge. And the old bridge has suffered from wear and tear. Mm -hmm. And then we have been rehabilitating it, but not very intensively. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some caterpillars that went and did the work from cooperative down to Takwa, they crossed on it and the bridge collapsed. We had to federate our forces because all actors that are on the ground have one aim. Be it the SDU, be it the military, be it the council, the development of the people. And the military has that component of development. So with that now, we came into an agreement, particularly the military and the council. We had to source for timber from Tenala. Mm -hmm. We did, we brought in money and brought in materials. They sourced the timber, and since the military, they are more, they had to transport the timber. And I sent my team of technicians. They went and rehabilitated it in a way that it will be more durable. Mm -hmm. So it's a partnership for development where we use the manpower of the military mm -hmm. and then the technical capacity and the finances from the council. The council disposed. The rehabilitation of the bridge is important. We say that it is about 600,000, and then the contractor who used the caterpillars to go over it compensated really? with 100,000. Because we said if you have destroyed, you must partner in the, it, it was not your intention, but you have yeah. caused harm. So that is some sort of yeah, uh, com uh, yes, compensation. Yes, so compensation, the contractor gave 100,000, we added to it, and we have rehabilitated. And it's important, I highlight here. That was not our initial intention. We were targeting the bridge at Befua, still we didn't mention, mm -hmm. that is virtually impossible. But when this one collapsed, we assessed to see which was a priority. So we rehabilitated that now it is very functional. Yeah. The heavy duty vehicles are using it once more. So we can go from Vernal to Menji with a lot of ease and with confidence. Yeah. So our attention now is turning to our original. Yeah, no, we'll have a report. No, we have. Yeah. Gather me, they have a report on that bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So, London, yeah, thank you for that wonderful explanation. You know, sometimes information, future, like that, when we don't have the right source, people speculate. They draw conclusions, they make references, inference on their mind, and they may be having a different thinking. Now, let me mean say something yes. to the governance of my population. Mm -hmm. We, the council has an executive. We work as a team, but the chief executive is the mayor. When they are in doubt, they try to source the mayor. Because I, hold, I have the corporate responsibility to explain. Because the issue of the bridge, I saw a footage also, mm -hmm. but I am not good at responding at social media. Yeah. I said when the time will come, I will be able to explain. They tacked it to some other persons. No, it is a contract that came from the Ministry of Public Works directly. It was not awarded by the council. So any person, if the council is coming in, we are there to uh, do quality assurance. Yeah. Because whatever project belongs to my population, yeah. and I have the mandate to oversee that it is done the way it's supposed to be done. Oh, thank you so much. Okay, now let's switch gear a little bit. Uh, uh, water, you know, water. They say water is life. I know throughout the crisis, many things were abandoned. You know, it's like our village. All these telephone down were like kind of in chaotic. Uh, I know maintenance of pipe bond water was probably was left for that number of years. But right now, that we are trying to rehabilitate certain infrastructures the road, other project buildings. The issue of water, the, the, uh, we got the news that there's no water in Menji. How do you cope in your own office? It is an unfortunate situation which we met, attempted to reverse it, but we are coming back to the same situation, but we are working. 
Following the situation that we have at hand, mm -hmm. most of the water mains were left, they were abandoned. So because of rust and so many things, they could not flow. So when we came in, we started a piecemeal provision of water to Menji. In 2021, the council rehabilitated the spring that was at Lisbon so that the people around the cooperative should be served. Mm -hmm. We came below the SDO's office. There is a spring there. The council constructed a water project that supplied the administrative headquarters, the administrative area, and uh, run by solar panel. So we have a solar panel. It had been flowing. That is what was serving Menji up to 2023. But of recent, due to lightning and thunder, the, the, the pump was blown. So we are about replacing it. And then we went to the state and cried. Menji as a divisional headquarters cannot be without water. So the state transferred resources. And it's important I highlight resources, 100 million, that the problem of water in Menji should be history. And in December 2023, we all applauded thinking that it was history because water flew in Menji. We discovered that there was a better catchment with more catchment you and then Bangatra, yeah. and there it will be shorter because the money that was given could not rehabilitate the pipeline from Azi. Yes, Vianga right to Daswa. Mm -hmm. So we created now an alternative pipeline that was to serve only Menji. And eventually, if we have money, we rehabilitate the other to serve. Mm -hmm. So, but what happened was water flew very well in December, and every person was happy. But some technical issues came up. You know, we are in a zone where the terrain is very hilly. Yeah. During now the rainy season, the heavy rains, there was a landslide that came and destroyed the catchment. So it carried away the, 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 the filtration tank and the reservoir. The dike that was built to dam the water mm -hmm. was swept away. And then what equally we discovered is that the public engineer that designed the project said we should use PVC pipe 10. But the water yield was so high right. that it breaks the pipe. Somewhere around Senfem, around the market, the temporal market yeah. that is there, mm -hmm. you see water is flowing there. There is a flexion there, and due to the pressure, it's always getting broken. So we are called back on the contractor to change and bring us PVC 16. Mm -hmm. So the issue of water, we are taking mm -hmm. adequate care. can understand the pressure. And the pressure. Because water had flown right up to the SDU's residence. And to measure the quality of pressure, when the water came, just those who know Menji very well around mm -hmm. Parashu, yeah. it went up to the height of the solar panel that are there. So we were so happy and every person was jubilant. In December, when the phone came and we went around Menji, every person came around the church, we were all jubilating that this water crisis is over. So with that now, I want to assure my population, we gave inadequate care. But for those technical reasons, there is a hitch. It's not an abandoned project. Soon as water will flow. Soonest. Yes, thank you, at least for that explanation. You know, and that's why I gave you. That's why I've always urged people to, to pay attention, listening to what is happening before they make any conclusion. So people should not jump into a certain thing without knowing exactly what is happening. Uh, Lord Mayor, uh, this question. Now, people may have a little bit of mixed feeling that how are you able to distribute the wealth or the resources? They always say the national cake. Some people, like the, well, I mentioned the telephone now. Like for example, the bank, we say they are larger in number or they are bigger in job bill, which is one of the smallest funds. They may be complaining that they are not having anything. How are you able to maybe have a good plan that everybody will feel really comfortable. I know human beings can never be 100% satisfactory. Okay, thank you so much. When I grew up learning, studying history, I learned what destroyed capitalism in the Eastern world was something that they tried to neglect the abilities of persons. So in the council I said, from each according to his ability and to each according to his needs. And that now built on an equation of equity. I've been able to tell my counselors, because those are those who represent the population, I've been able to tell them that we have three fundums. They have different strengths. 
I'll put it from this way. If I were to call my own convention, that Menji Council Convention, and I'm expecting contributions from resources, they will not come equally from the three funders. If you look at them in terms of their sizes, physical size, you look at it in terms of population, it means the development needs are different. So we must go for equity and not equality. For that now, the larger fondom takes the larger share, but the smaller fondoms are non neglected. So I have an equation, a ratio of 5 is to 3 is to 1. It means at any one moment that I have investment resources, if in a year I have 200 million, minimum is that 5, that is 5 shares sure. mm -hmm. are going to the mighty Levan fondom. Three shares are going to the brotherly assorted fondom that is average, mm -hmm. and they will not neglect a small Zoogi fondom. So that at any one time in the year, each fondom has a fair share of the resources. No person is neglected. We were talking of water. Water has been done within the bank fondom. We have it at Dumui. We have it in Menji. Menji, by chance, is within the bank fondom. You have it in Go, going down to Atenata. You have it in Zoogi. When it comes to solar panels, we have done it in Menji. The largest share, 100 million, 150 million was in Menji, which is Lebanon. This year, we had resources we have sent to Takwa. We have sent now to Esota, and we have sent to Zoogi, each in different proportions. For the bridges, this year, we have a bridge to be constructed at Dungwe, on the road that we are working jointly with Lekudu. Yeah. Then we have one too in, in Esota. And then when it comes now to roads, we did not have much money this year, but we have sent it from Nzenale to Takwa. Because one thing, again, that we are talking about this equity, we should not look at it only at fundum lines. We have the economic zone of the municipality, which is the southern zone. Mm -hmm. And truth be told, we have been accused of neglecting the bread baskets of the municipality. Below the Menji has come and below Moonhead, yeah. they seem to have been neglected. Below Gore Hill, they seem to have been neglected. Yet, that is the breadbasket of the municipality. So this year, we tilted and focused resources towards that direction. So that there is the fundum equity, and then there is a zona equity within the fundums and within the municipality. With that, it might not be perfect, but we think we are able to use it to pacify so that no person, as children sleeping on the same bed, no person should overpull the blanket towards him or herself. Let me, uh, I want to thank you so much uh, for taking this time. I know you so ought to be sleeping. I don't know the time difference between Cameroon and here. <laughs> you know, I know you should be tired. Uh, I thank you for taking this time to come out and maybe talk to me, talk to Gaza Media, talk to the people of Menji uh, Royal Council uh, who want to appreciate you again once more. Maybe if they have any last word, then we can wrap it up here. Yes, my last word is to emphasize on this partnership. We can call it PPP, that is private sector public partnership. If you look at the council more like public, you are the private sector. What drives the world are these private sector, uh, public sector partnership. If the communities that you belong to could bring in this galvanizing force, bring in these straight ideas, we will change our community, our major council, to an Dorado. One thing I tell my population is that we are blessed in a way. We are not just a council, we are a divisional council, so to say. Because we move from a divisional council, it is today a rural council, a municipality, but it still houses the headquarters. And then I will plead before I go, let me give priorities. The roads are there, but there is one key issue that is lacking, electricity. Because solar panels are everywhere lighting compounds, but the main headquarters remains. The solar panels can light and provide basic charging, but cannot permit economic growth. Yeah, industrial. Yes, industrial. All they're, those industries are waiting, yes, they're yes, they're waiting, waiting, they yeah. cannot come back. So that is the cry of Meiji Council. That if we could partner and come up with a mighty solar plant mm -hmm. and we look at how we manage it, it will be a win win partnership and it will put a lot of smiles on the faces of those who are still back home. No, I think that is the message that uh, I think we need to hammer on this issue because somebody has mentioned this to me before. Say, this solar panel, you can use it at home to watch TV, but if you, this planning machine, in, 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 in industrial, not heavy like,
heavy industrial mining, but you see like planning machine, you see like weathering for windows and all those kind of meaningful industrial kind of project. This solar panel cannot really, the one that we have now cannot really do that. I think that would be something that uh, I think we should really engage on. Uh, maybe I will try myself, uh, talk to the CEO, try to get them on board so that uh, of this organization so that within the municipality you have area where you think that they have some plaza or where you think that they can be a little bit kind of industrious like you may have a manji if you go up to Jensen where they have a market square if you continue that to around go then you go up to you have a Z, those kind of small big area where they can have this kind of concentrated big uh yes agglomeration of persons yes yes and to exit if I do not thank Lekudu USA, either USA, for what they have been doing this far, because we have been working, but they have been putting broader smiles on the population, on the faces of the population. The health campaign, I think I was there this 2023, and I saw how people were trekking from far and wide to come and be, I think it has increased, it has extended their lifespan. The solar panels, we are saying it is thanks to them water projects they contribute so i want to thank them that we have taken note that they are a veritable force in our development and we'll do everything to facilitate the process we can never be stumbling blocks we are facilitators we are facilitators and we'll ensure them that whatever dollar comes in will account it to the last cent yeah, Lord Mayor. Dear viewers, uh, you've listened to Lord Mayor. It was a wonderful privilege to have him here. Again, stay on uh, and continue to follow us on our Gaza Media YouTube channel. We'll continue to bring you community updates of what is happening, especially with focus in the building. Again, I'm Ms. Kuma. Thank you.